White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany rips no mask Nancy Pelosi over her salon visit. The Washington Post says that if Joe Biden doesn't win, America should prepare for war. Plus, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo threatens President Trump. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. Hope you've had a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Nancy Pelosi because this hair salon saga continues. Now she's out there saying that she was set up, that the whole thing was a setup, and the salon owner actually owes her an apology. So this was the topic at yesterday's Thursday's White House press conference, and Kaylee McEnany roasted Nancy Pelosi just went after her. It was so awesome because Nancy Pelosi is supposed to be in Washington, D.C. She's supposed to be negotiating legislation to help small businesses like this salon, yet Pelosi is showing that the rules for ordinary Americans, they don't apply to her. And here's Kayleigh McEnany. Pelosi was not in the halls of Congress when I asked where she was. She was not working in good faith to make a deal for the American people. Nope, Nancy Pelosi was found in San Francisco at a hair salon where she was indoors, even though salons in California are not only open for outdoor service. Apparently, the rules do not apply to Speaker Nancy Pelosi. That was just awesome. And to drive the point home, the White House press room now has monitors on either side of the podium. And Kaylee McEnany, while she was roasting Nancy Pelosi, the video of Pelosi in the salon was playing on a loop. It just kept looping for these left-wing reporters to just sit there. Can you imagine how awesome that is for these left-wingers to just be sitting there watching this video over and over again while McEnany gives her opening statement? It's just priceless. And here's more from the press secretary. She wants small businesses to stay shut down, but only reopen for her convenience. Before she skipped town to violate her state's health guidelines, Pelosi proposed a bill. It was called the HEROES Act, which contained no additional paycheck protection funding. This is funding that would help the very small business she has bizarrely accused of plotting against her. It's just awesome. McEnany is telling it like it is, ripping into Pelosi for this left-wing elitist attitude, this attitude that says while Americans are locked down, While businesses can't be open in California and San Francisco, particularly, Nancy Pelosi will do what she wants. She'll go where she wants. She'll get her hair done. She won't wear a mask, even though ordinary Americans over there have to do this. They have to comply. They have to listen to the government. But the rules don't apply to Nancy Pelosi. In another Marie Antoinette moment, she shows that these left-wing leaders, they don't care. They don't care about safety. They don't care about law and order. And they sure don't care about the rules that they force other people. People are out of work. Businesses are closed. But that doesn't matter to Nancy Pelosi. And I'm glad Kaylee McEnany took her opening statement to address this because this is an attitude of so many on the left. And Americans don't like it. They can't stand it. Good for McEnany. But Nancy Pelosi, she didn't let this go. She actually fired back at a press conference. She was taking questions. She says she was set up. And here's Nancy Pelosi. I take responsibility for trusting uh, the word of a neighborhood salon that I've been to over the years many times. And that um, when they said, well, we're able to accommodate people one person at a time and that we can set up that time, I trusted that. As it turns out, it was a setup. What kind of lame response is that? That's kind of like one of those apologies. Someone gets caught saying something offensive And then they apologize by saying, I'm so sorry. I'm sincerely sorry for how you interpreted my remark. Give me a break. She takes responsibility for being set up. It's so lame, folks. She doesn't take responsibility for not wearing a mask. She doesn't take responsibility for booking an appointment at a hair salon that she knows is closed. It's in her own city. It's forced to be closed per these mandates by these Democrat leaders. And she doesn't take responsibility for skipping town when she should be negotiating to help those businesses reopen. But she takes responsibility for being set up. Oh, my gosh. And here's more from Pelosi. 
Well, I don't. I think that they owe, uh, that this salon owes me an apology for setting up. Pelosi has owed an apology? That's just unreal. And the fact that McEnany brought this up, that she focused on it during her opening remarks, is even more important because the rest of the media just tried to ignore it. They're trying to downplay it. CBS News, ABC, NBC, none of them covered the story when it first broke. None of them brought it up at all. The only time they mentioned it or started to mention it was when Nancy Pelosi says she was set up. It's a frame job. They're out to get me. That's when they took notice. They've been trying to downplay it ever since. The media doesn't think that this is important, that this elitist left-wing leader thinks that there's a different set of rules for her than for the rest of the people, that she went to a salon that she knows was locked down in her own city, that she didn't wear a mask. That's not newsworthy. She's breaking the laws over in California, and they don't cover it. NBC News reporter Dylan Byers tried to downplay it. He put out this tweet. America is beset by internal problems and external threats. We face severe political and cultural tensions, a global pandemic, and threats from foreign adversaries. But I, for one, believe there is no issue so pressing today as a legislator's visit to a San Francisco hair salon. So, Byers was roasted on social media and across the board because, again, trying to be sarcastic, when this does play, this Marie Antoinette type of attitude is something that American people do not like. They can't stand it. And when they are suffering, when businesses are shut down and she skirts the rules, that is a big deal. Jerry Dunleavy over at the Washington Examiner, in reply, he tweeted this. Journalists like Dylan are why Pelosi decided to try to just brazen her way through this, which is a great point. And Molly Hemingway, she tweeted this, which I thought was a great response. Senior media reporter at NBC, MSNBC, thinks draconian government mandates destroying small businesses and the leader's flouting of the rules that others are having their lives and businesses destroyed over are silly little nothing stories. Bingo. That's exactly what it's about, and that's why it's important. American people are suffering. Businesses are forced to be closed. They were deemed non-essential by these leaders, and yet she goes to get her essential haircut and blow dry at a place that's mandated to be closed and she's not wearing a mask like you're supposed to do through ordinance, by city ordinance. Give me a break, folks. Nancy Pelosi deserves the roasting. Great for Kaylee McEnany for focusing on it at Thursday's briefing. So next, I want to talk about this storyline that's coming out of the Democrats, coming out of Joe Biden. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. We're making our push for 100,000 subscribers by Election Day. 100K by Election Day, and we can get there with your help. So next, I want to talk about this talking point, this storyline that the media are focusing on, Democrats are focusing on now, and that is they are addressing the violence. The polling told them we have to address the violence. So how do they address it? They're addressing it by saying it's President Trump's fault. And it goes starts from the very top. Joe Biden, in a recent speech, he said that the violence was Trump's fault, or, well, he tried to say it. And here's Biden. He doesn't want to shed light. He wants to generate heat. And he's stroking violence in our cities. You know, this is a, a tragic fact of the matter that about his perilous hour, that how he's dealing with this perilous hour in our nation. Stroking? Come on, man. Biden also said that if President Trump wins re-election, the violence will continue. He flat out said that, that if President Trump wins, the violence will continue. Is that some kind of left-wing threat? Give us our way, give us Biden, or we're going to continue the violence? And Biden is okay with that? He flat out said that. President Trump wins, the violence will continue. Well, guess what? That memo, that talking point is carried over, and it was very evident in the Washington Post story this week that's just outrageous. Basically, this story, this op-ed says that if Joe Biden doesn't win in a landslide, America should prepare for war. And here's the story. The op-ed titled, What's the Worst That Could Happen? is written by Rosa Brooks, a law professor at Georgetown University. In it, Brooks notes that the Transition Integrity Project, which she co-founded, built a series of war games, gathered participants, and asked them to imagine what they do in a range of election and transition scenarios. 
A landslide for Joe Biden resulted in a relatively ordered transfer of power. Every other scenario we looked at involves street-level violence and political crisis, according to Brooks. Are you kidding me with this? This is the same thing Joe Biden was saying, that if President Trump wins, the violence will continue. Now they're talking about it at the Washington Post. And the thing is, this whole story is bogus. These scenarios that they play out, they're trying to get the reaction of what Joe Biden and his team and President Trump and his team would do. So they couldn't ask them. So they bring in participants to be Team Biden and be Team Trump. And that's where you can see that this whole thing is ridiculous. Here's more. Since asking Biden and President Donald Trump was not possible, the project relied on participants with similar backgrounds. Republican National Committee Chairman Michael Steele, former Kentucky Secretary of State Trey Grayson, and conservative commentator Bill Kristol were among those on the GOP side. All have been described as never Trump or not Trump Republicans, the Boston Globe reported. In each scenario, Team Trump, the players assigned to simulate the Trump campaign and its elected and appointed allies, was ruthless and unconstrained right out of the gate, and Team Biden struggled to get out of reaction mode, according to Brooks. Wow. Team Trump, in this analysis, is made up of never Trumpers. In every scenario, had Biden calling for peaceful protests and the Trump team, made up of these guys, call for violence. It was just an outrageous story, folks, but this is the storyline that's getting pushed. This is the storyline that's getting out there. Vote for Trump, you'll get violence. Yet President Trump has been ahead of the game. He's been calling for the end of violence offering to help in these cities, and the Democrats turn him down. It's unreal, yet this is what they're saying out there. It's just unbelievable. So next, I want to talk about what's going on in New York, because Governor Andrew Cuomo has taken a lot of heat this week for comments that he directed at President Trump. Now, if you recall, earlier in the week, President Trump went down to Kenosha, Wisconsin, where riots were tamped down. There was an uprising. It got put down because of law and order. People welcomed him with open arms, miles long of greeters waiting for President Trump. That was Kenosha, Wisconsin. Go to New York City, Andrew Cuomo says it'll be a different story. And here it is. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo all but threatened President Trump's safety if he returns to New York City in a rant responding to an exclusive story by The Post that Trump is looking to pull federal funds from lawless cities, including New York. Cuomo called an emergency press conference to tear into Trump for the order, which cites New York's rising murder rates and defunding the NYPD. He better have an army if he thinks he's going to walk down the street in New York. New Yorkers don't want to have anything to do with him, the Democrat said, all but threatening the commander-in-chief. Cuomo also added that the president can't have enough bodyguards if he's walking in New York. Then, in the same press conference, Cuomo turned personal against President Trump. He said that this had nothing to do with murder rates or shootings, this whole defund the police movement. And here's more from Cuomo. I think it's because he's from New York and New York City rejected him always, Cuomo said. He was dismissed as a clown in New York City. Those who know him best like him least. Cuomo jeered. He was disrespected in New York City. No one took him seriously and he was just a tabloid cartoon. Oh my gosh. This review of cities that President Trump is looking at certainly has the Democrats scared because no one wants their funding cut. But us, all of us as taxpayers, we shouldn't be funding cities that condone rioting and looting, vandalism, lawlessness, that they won't step up for law and order and protect their citizens. We as taxpayers are supposed to fund that? Good for President Trump for sticking up for this, for saying this, for ordering this review. Let's see what happens, but this is the right approach. Unless cities can protect their citizens, we should not be funding them. And Andrew Cuomo, what a perfect story. He's so ridiculous. It leads us, of course, to our Friday segment where we have to ask Andrew Cuomo and other people on the left, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. All right. First, in a channeling of Rachel Dolezal, we have a professor who has now come out and said that for years she has claimed to be black when she really wasn't. I guess this whole white guilt has finally caught up with her, so she's had to make it public that she's really not black. 
To an escalating degree over my adult life, I have eschewed my lived experience as a white Jewish child in suburban Kansas City under various assumed identities within a blackness that I had no right to claim. First, North African blackness, then U.S.-rooted blackness, then Caribbean-rooted Bronx blackness, Jessica Krug wrote. She added that claiming identities as her own is the very epitome of violence, of thievery and appropriation, of the myriad ways in which non-black people continue to use and abuse black identities and cultures. Wow. Pretending to be black is now violent, according to her, with her leftist white guilt. It's absolutely awesome. She definitely deserves to be in relaxed brain. And of course, we can't have this relaxed brain this week without Nancy Pelosi. It was just awesome. Protesters gathered outside her house. They draped blow dryers over her trees and protested because, again, hair salons are closed down. You have to wear masks. Nancy Pelosi goes in, no masks, in a salon that she knows to be closed. This whole setup idea is bogus because she called to make the appointment, which the stylist booked independently. Doesn't need permission from the owner because they rent the space, the individual stylist. Nancy Pelosi knew this. She booked it anyway. And I'm a fan of memes. So we have to have this meme, which is just great. It just sums these up. Check this out. And then as they conditioned my hair and polished my nails, the salon thug screamed, this is MAGA country. I love it. I absolutely love it. That's Nancy Pelosi. That's Relaxed Brain. Folks, tomorrow, please tune in 11 a.m. Central Time. We've got our Saturday live stream. I'm going to be giving you newest stories of the day, plus diving in depth to Joe Biden versus President Trump, a look at the election, a look at the strategies, what's going on, and how things could turn out in November. So please tune in for that. But that's our show for today. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-Minute News Hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-Minute News Hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.